Dave Dombrowski and the Philadelphia Phillies, they are all in. They are pushing all their poker chips in. The day after signing Trey Turner, they go out and spend another $85 million to bolster their starting pitching and their relief pitching. Major League Free Agency is on fire, actually, breaking news right before we're going live here. Aaron Judge signs a record deal as well. We're going to talk all this free agency news on Trending in the AM, which starts in 30 seconds. And a very good morning, everybody. Welcome to Trending in the AM right here on DSM Media. We're live across all social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube. You know the drill. Like, share, retweet, follow on all those social media platforms. And do us a favor. Make sure you hit the like button, the subscribe button on YouTube. And make sure if you want to get interactive with the conversation, it's on the Facebook or the YouTube page. It's the only place I can see your your comments and your thoughts. Uh, If you're watching on Twitter, just follow along and enjoy the ride. Uh, Yesterday, the day after signing Trey Turner to a record deal, Dave Dombrowski goes out last night. He says yesterday afternoon, "Uh, we're not close. We're not there just yet. And then he decides to go out last night, sign Taiwan Walker to a four-year 72 Million dollar contract, 18 million a year. And then Matt Strom, lefty reliever, go out and sign him to a two year, $15 million deal. Dave Dombrowski's not messing around, guys. And, and, and I want to I start the show off by just saying, look, I know I put out there that I'm not, it's, it seems like by my tweets and my comments that I'm not overly, overly thrilled with the Taiwan Walker deal. And, and, and there's reasons. Look, it's, it's not that. Taiwan Walker is a bad pitcher. I'm just not sure how much of a needle mover Taiwan Walker really is. Is Taiwan Walker the kind of guy that's going to come in here and really, look, we, we, we got to replace the Noah Syndergaard, the Zach Eflin, and the Kyle Gibson innings. The fifth starter position will be Andrew Painter, Bailey Falter, whoever uh, it may be. So that fourth spot has got to fill in 200 innings. And is Taiwan Walker really going to be that much better than what we had? Is he going to be better? Absolutely, he's going to be better. Is he going to be that much better? That is my question. And and, and let's let's remember something about Taiwan Walker. He's 30 years old. He'll be 31 this year. Uh, The guy's got an injury history in in Major League Baseball. Um, He has not had a 30 he's had one game one season in his career where he's pitched in 30 games and that was 2021 you know he's had seasons in 18 and 19 in a combined four starts in 2016 he probably missed seven or eight starts he had 25 starts in that season so the guy does have an injury history that is something that concerns me slightly uh the other thing that concerns me slightly is that he gives up home runs and and going from the Mets to to Philly you know 25 27 home runs a season that's going to be a problem and the final issue that I have with it, and the real issue, it's the four years. Now, I don't care about the money. $18 million, whatever. It's money. It's not my money. I could care less. But four years. And, and, and this is something that I think people are, 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 are not thinking about, the four years here. He's 30. He's going to be 34 at the end of the contract. We have Zach Wheeler as our ace. He's signed for two more years, 2023 and 2024. Aaron Nola is a free agent after 2023. Ranger Suarez, whether he'll be three or whether Taiwan Walker will be three, I don't know. He signed through 2025, three more years. And then you got the young kids, Andrew Painter, McAble, et cetera, down the minor leagues. You're now paying Taiwan Walker more than Aaron Nola. Aaron Nola is coming up on the end of his contract. Is this a precursor to Aaron Nola not being part of the Philadelphia Phillies organization long term? And I think if that is even remotely close to being a possibility, I think it's a wrong move. You bring him in for four years, Painter and Abel will be in the starting line or in the starting rotation, one of them possibly later this year or this upcoming season, uh, maybe both of them by 2024. 
So that's two spots in your rotation there. So what are you going to do with these other guys? You know, Ranger Suarez is going to be here for a while. Is Taiwan Walker unofficially kind of like escorting Aaron Nola out the door? And if that is even remotely the case, it's a big mistake because Aaron Nola is obviously 10 times the pitcher that Taiwan Walker is. I think he was just named a second team all Major League Baseball uh, yesterday or two days ago. Um, so congratulations to him on that. Just JT Romuto was the first team uh, catcher for Major League Baseball. I just, I just don't understand it. And, and now I see this morning that, you know, there are two names that I wanted. Jamison Talion and Jose Quintana. They were the names I wanted because I thought they were going to sign easier deals, smaller deals, less years deals. And then it comes out that Jamison Talion last night, about seven hours ago, I saw it, about 1 a.m., signed, also assigned a four-year deal, about $68 million, so like $3 million less. So maybe the free agent pitching market, because of the prices that it went out to DeGrom and Verlander, the price of the pitching market went up. So maybe the four-year deal is what was required. But if it, that's what's required to give a guy like Taiwan Walker four years to potentially block one of your two young stars in the minors, I don't know if I'm doing it. I might go out and see if I can get Noah Syndergaard back on a one-year deal. Now, I, I'm not a Zach Eflin fan. You guys know that. I don't know what I would have done <clears throat> differently. But I'm just not thrilled with giving a guy that's had two really solid years in a row. This past year was probably his best year as a pitcher. But he's had some inconsistencies and some injury history for years. Look, we, we, we did the big three-year deal to the free agent pitcher, you know, Jake Arrieta, hoping that he was going to, you know, turn things back around and be a great pitcher. And that did not work out for us. Maybe I've got some leftover resentment towards that Jake Arrieta situation. I just have a problem given four years when we have the, the plethora of starting pitching in our minor league system to a guy like Taiwan Walker. Look, he's going to be good. He's going to be the fourth guy in the rotation, probably. It's probably going to go Wheeler, Nola, Ranger, him. We saw come playoff time the lack of having a four starter, what that did, and, and, and how that caused problems. But I just don't know if it's a needle mover enough to get excited about. That's the thing that really I think, between besides the Aaron Nola portion of it, the thing that's bothering me is how excited everybody is about this move. Oh, they're all in. And they are all in. Between this and the Matt Strom, and we'll get to Matt Strom in a second, you know, they are now over the luxury tax. Three guys, they said they had like $45, $50 million to spend. And they spent it all on three guys. And they are now officially over the luxury tax. So they're going to need more relievers, so they are going to go over the luxury tax. It also means that possibly the, the Aaron Nola extension doesn't come this offseason, which is a problem. I'm just not sure if it's that much of a needle mover. Will he make us better? Sure. Is he going to turn out to make us win four or five more games than we would have without him? I don't know. I, I, I really, I'm really curious why people are so excited. I mean, I'm looking at his stats right now. Last year, he had a 3 4 9 ERA and 29 starts. So he probably missed a couple starts with an injury. You know, every pitcher misses a few starts here and there. 45 walks. He only gave up 15 home runs. It was it was it was probably his best season as a pitcher. A one basically a one two whip. Um, strikes out some guys. 7.6 per nine it was a good season. But in 2021, he had a near four five ERA. Basically two more innings, and he gave up 26 home runs. Walked 55 guys that year. Had almost a one two whip that year as well. So you look at that. Then 2020, I just watched 2020. I don't even look at 2020 numbers. 18 and 19, he pitched a complete. Four games over two seasons. In 2017, 28 games, he had a 3 5 ERA. So he had a good season. Still, you know, 17 home runs, 61 walks. The walks were up a little higher that year. 2016, a 4 2 2. 2015, 4 5 6. So he's one of those guys, just kind of a better version of Kyle Gibson in the sense where he has one good season and then has two bad seasons. Then has one good season and then has two bad seasons. So we just signed a guy. That's inconsistently a decent pitcher for four years. So are we going to get good Taiwan Walker next year? Yeah, I'd say probably not. We're going to get average Taiwan Walker next year, which again, four years is a lot to commit to a guy that's good. 
the, the jumping up and down and the excitement. It's 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 over the top in my opinion. I don't think he's that special to be like. Let let's if you want to get excited about the the whole package of Trey Turner, Taiwan Walker, and Matt Strom over a two day period. Sure, get excited about that. But to get excited like people are, like Taiwan Walker is going to be the difference between us winning or not winning a World Series. I think there's a little bit of over the topness coming from Phillies fans. I think there's just a little too much. Maybe it's the the negativity coming from Sixers land. You know, you need something to be positive about. The Eagles are just so good right now. I I, I don't know. Excuse me. I just don't see the Taiwan Walker deal being worth it. I would have waited for the pitching market to play out. I would have waited for the pitching market to see what happened. Let Talion go somewhere for four years. Let him go for four years. Find out what's left. And, and then made a move. That way you're not blocking Andrew Painter. You're not blocking, you know, Mick Abel from getting into the starting rotation this year or next year. Everybody literally two or three months ago at the end of the season, well, it wasn't even that long ago, about a month and a half ago, everyone was like, oh, Andrew Painter and Mick Abel need to be starting week one. Now all of a sudden we're okay making them wait because we got Taiwan Walker. I just, I, I just don't get it. I, I'm not over the top with it. And then Matt Strom, you go out and get a lefty reliever from the Red Sox. Another 30-year-old guy. You give him a $15 million two-year deal. And again, whatever. I don't care about the money. I really don't. The years, it's questionable. We've given up some bad contracts to relief pitchers over the last five or six years. And last year, again, just like Taiwan Walker, last year, we basically signed two 30-year-old guys yesterday that had their best years in 2022. But if you go back throughout the rest of their stuff, there's a lot of inconsistencies. Last year, he had a 3-8-3 ERA, pitched 50 games out of the bullpen, lefty, comes in the 6th, 8th, 7th. He can come in. He's a Swiss Army knife type guy. He can do pretty much anything. Struck out 52 guys in 44 innings. So he strikes out a lot of guys, which is good. Uh, walks, 17, not bad. His whip is a little high, 1.2 whip. Means he gives up some base runners. But then 2021, he was injured, so you can't really do anything there. 2020 was the short season. 2019, he had a 4.71 ERA in 46 games out of the bullpen for San Diego. So, is that really that good? The year before that, 2018, 205. 2017, the year before that, 545. So, again, another guy that we go out there and we give a deal to that up, down, up, down. It's an inconsistent guy. Now, does he make us better? Yes. Yeah, I, I saw this breaking news, and we're going to get into it in a second. It's it's insane. I mean, I feel bad for the Giants and John Morsey or whoever it was that accidentally broke the news that uh, Aaron Judge went to the Giants and then, oops, my bad. Yeah, that was that was something yesterday. We're going to get to that in a little bit. <clears throat> Look, I have my concerns about these deals. Dave Dombrowski is all in. That's what Dave Dombrowski does. Like, I was talking to my man Jason and my man Josh. They're two guys up in Detroit. They've dealt with Dave Dombrowski before with the Tigers. He goes all in. He strips it down, and he puts puts you in the best position to win a World Series. And then you're screwed down the line. That That's what Dave – that that's what J, Jason's exact words were to me last night. He puts you all in with the best opportunity to win. And then who knows, and then, then you're kind of screwed five years later. And, 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 look, the Tigers are still struggling. You know, they still got that big, massive Miguel Cabrera contract. Now, baseball's different. I, I, I do want to uh, say one thing, though, and, and it's these contract annual values. Even even Taiwan Walker at 18 million. If Jameson Talion's getting 16, Walker at 18, that's a pretty cheap, you know, average annual salary based on what other guys are getting. You look at the top four, eight guys, what they're making on the Phillies. Trey Turner, 27.2. Bryce Harper's making a measly 25.3. JT's making 23.8. Zach Wheeler, 23.6. Castellanos and Schwarber, 20. Walker and Nola, 18 and 16. <coughs> They are some steals of deals. And he seems to have, and this goes to something I wanted to talk about. <clears throat> Sorry, I can't, <clears throat> can't clear my throat here. Um, something I wanted to talk about today, and, and, and we're not going to get too deep into it today because of all this breaking news with free agency, is that people want to come play in Philly. They're willing to take 
a little bit less annual salary for the long term, you know, the long term, uh, you know, guarantee. You know, there's rumors that San Diego offered like forty million dollars more to Trey Turner, but he wanted to come to Philly. He saw what was going on in October in Philly, the Red October. He saw what the fan base, the fan base in Philly. Gets a bad rap, but if you have a strong, strong mental side as an athlete, there's no better place to play. And the way athletes across the board, Phillies, Sixers, you know, all across the board, Eagles, they want to come here. Johnny Hockey wanted to come play in his hometown with the Flyers. He's willing to take less. He didn't get the deal done. Whatever. That's a, that's another whole subject. But people want to play in Philly. Just because a few guys have trouble playing here, like the Ben Simmons of the world, people do really do want to play here because they see the passion of the fan base. And it's a great city. It's it's why so many athletes, they'll, they'll play in Philly. They might get traded late in their career, but they come back and live in Philly because it's a great city and they love the passion of Philly. So Trey Turner turning that money down, you know, some extra money, life-changing money to come to Philly says a lot about the Phillies organization and says a lot about how all in Dave Dombrowski and the Phillies are. Again, it just comes down to the fact that is this the right move? Is getting Taiwan Walker for four years? Now, I wanted, I was going to say this morning, I was going to say, well, we got to wait and see how the rest of the contracts play out for the rest of you know the starting pitching market, what Carlos Rodon gets, what Jose Quintana gets. Talion obviously got another four-year deal few million dollars overall less than than Taiwan Walker. If that's what the market is, that to get a pitcher, you got to give him four years. It's kind of crazy. It really is kind of crazy. You think about it, Zach Eflin got three years. But Kyle Gibson only got one. So I, I don't know. I don't know. I think you could have probably done better. And now, like I said, now the Phillies are at the luxury tax. They are literally over that luxury tax now. So one reliever wasn't enough. They needed to add two or three going to put them over are they going to have to make a trade now to to bolster this team anymore yeah I, I just i just in my mind as i keep talking i just keep going back to the aaron nola uh fear that this is kind of a backup plan that we're going to lose aaron nola and taiwan walker is really the replacement of aaron nola in the rotation down the line obviously not this year but down the line so yeah i want to bring this up here aaron judge breaking news literally five minutes, 10 minutes before we went live on the show, <clears throat> signed a nine-year, $370 million contract to stay with the New York Yankees. First and foremost, I feel bad for the Giants. John Morrissey, I think it was, one of the, one of the big blue check marks for ESPN or MLB Network, you know, tweeted out yesterday that he, they were in agreement um, with the Giants. And then, like, five minutes later, he said, oops, sorry, my bad. I haven't really heard the confirmation. Man, could you imagine being a Giants fan? Can you imagine when, when, we, when the news broke that Bryce Harper came to Philly? I forget who had it first. But if that news broke that Bryce Harper was coming to Philly, and then five minutes later, oh, sorry, no, I had that wrong. He was staying in Washington. Oh, man, the emotional roller coaster that the San Francisco Giants and their fan base had to be on yesterday. And then to come up this morning and breaking news, Aaron Judge staying in the Yankees. Dude, again, these contracts, they're, they're crazy. Nine years, $370 million. He's a 31-year-old baseball player. And, and I get that you got to give long-term contracts out nowadays. They, these 29, 30-year-olds, they're getting nine, 10-year deals. That is the way baseball is. But, man, at some point, Baseball's going to have to realize that these contracts are going to backfire. The length, I mean, you look at Miguel Cabrera or Albert Pujols late in their careers on those big deals that it's just not, it's just not worth it. I mean, I, I don't know. You've you got to start doing what the Braves doing and lock these guys up when they're 26 to the 10-year deals so that you're out of those contracts by the time they're 36. I don't know. And nine years for Aaron Judge, it's a long, long time. But again, he's the best power hitter in baseball at this point. Just hit 62 home runs last year. That That's market value. And I think that that, look, Aaron Judge to Trey Turner, two totally different ball players, two totally different positions, styles of players, everything. But to think we got 
Trey Turner for 11 years for 300, a $27 million average. When Aaron Judge got, what's that, nine divided by 37, that's $41 million a year. My math right? $41 million a year? Just goes to show, you know, that's insane. And, and, and to think that Trey Turner could have gotten closer to 30, 35 with the Padres, but chose Philly. Man, that's crazy. You know, they're, they're, there's only probably two or three teams that were probably in on Aaron Judge. The Yankees, the Giants. I don't know if anybody else was really in on them. But only the Yankees can afford that, really. The Dodgers can, too. But, yeah, it's $41 million a year. It's a lot of money for Aaron Judge at 31 years old. A lot of money. And, yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to work out for them or not. We are going to take a quick pause in the action here. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Gents Barber Lounge. Check out one of their two great locations in Fishtown and Old City today and book your appointment. They own the Craft and Shows Rate, the number one barber shop in Philadelphia on Yelp. Check out some of their great work here as they can handle any style cut, adult or kid. <laughs> Again, that's Jen's Barber Lounge there in Fishtown, Old City. Make sure you check them out. All right, so where are the Phillies now? All right, so they got their Trey Turner. They got their shortstop. Now they have to figure out what they're going to do with Bryce Harper till he's till, with the Bryce Harper situation till he returns. Your starting rotation is now set. You've got Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, Ranger Suarez, Tywan Walker, and then the fifth guy. Uh, the bullpen. You've got Jose Alvarado. You've got... You've got Sir Anthony Dominguez. You've got Connor Brogdon. You've got Matt Strom. You've got some other guys. You're going to need to bring in another guy in that bullpen. How many more moves are left on the table for the Phillies? Will they bring in another bullpen arm? Or will they kind of just piece it together with what they got? If, if Andrew Painter becomes the fifth starter, does Bailey Falter and Chris Sanchez become bullpen pieces for you? Um, I, I'm not sure how much more the Phillies will do this offseason. So the question is now, after making these three big moves, are the Phillies today, I don't even know what today's date is, like December, I don't even know, whatever day today is, December 8th, 9th, whatever it is, December 7th, it says it on my computer, there. Yeah, wow. are they better today than they were at the end of last season? And I think it's, I think it's a clear yes that they are better, but how much better? Now, I'm going to say it, once Bryce Harper's back, their offense is 10 times better better than it was last year and Trey turned to that lineup I mean massive massive change basically you, t- you went you, you replaced Gene Segura with Trey Turner and and I love Gene Segura it was funny yesterday I was at work and I was, I was paging through Twitter and doing things and, and something made me think I'm like holy shit Gene Segura's gone and Gene Segura got a lot of flack when he got to Philly but I'm gonna miss Gene Segura his energy and his fight and his his swinging out of his shoes every time to dribble a ball to second base. Man, I'm going to miss him. I, I, I was a Gene Segura fan, I won't lie. But Trey Turner, obviously, is a huge upgrade there. Um, but pitching. Pitching's what, what, what held us back. I mean, we got to the World Series, but barely. It was a magical run. It was tough. It was hard fought. Pitching was probably what held us back from winning that World Series. Now, if, if you take out what we did, Noah Syndergaard, and, and you put in Taiwan Walker, are we better in the World Series? Do we have a better chance if we put our current pitching staff now in that World Series against the Astros? I don't know if it's good enough or not. I don't know. And, and I, I, I'm going to say it again and again. I'm just concerned. I'm just concerned. I, I just don't have the overall love of these two moves. I'm just going through Twitter right now and seeing if anything else broke. Because once Aaron Judge went, and once Trey Turner went, everything is just starting to fly here, fly off the thing here. Uh, Carlos Correa, rumors maybe with him in San Francisco. Man, nine years, 360 now. Someone's saying I thought it was 370. Um, oh, yeah, again, Christy Alley passed away. We forgot to, forgot to mention that yesterday. That's a shame. Um, one of the best right there. Um, yeah, I, I just I just can't say that I'm – that I'm jumping for joy. I just, I maybe, maybe it's because everybody in Philly's nation was so over the top excited 
that it made me just be like, look, I got to be real here. We got to be realistic about what we just added. And eh, eh, it does okay for me. It's, it's, it's what it is. Now, I know what the market dictates. I know the market dictates certain things. But I just, I'm not thrilled. I'm not disappointed, but I'm not thrilled. Now, I could be totally wrong. Tywin Walker can come out next year and have another 3-5 ERA, pitch 29 games, and be lights out. And he has the capability of being a dominant starting pitcher. Hell, he might turn into our third best starting pitcher in 2023. He might be better than Ranger Suarez. But you got to remember and realize and look at his whole history and not just last year and realize there's a chance that he's not going to be what you think he's going to be. But it is what it is. It really is. Anyway, so respect. It's something I wanted to talk about today. And started to hint at it a little bit with Phillies. And I want to pull something up here real quick. We're getting a lot of disrespect in Philadelphia, and we have for a long time. And, you know, I think it's time that more people nationally respect the 11-1 Eagles, respect the Phillies fan base because players want to play here, respect the Sixers fans. It's time the organization does that. They realize that we aren't dumb and we know what's wrong. And, of course, respect the best damn morning show. Here, you know, in the Philadelphia area, trending in the AM. Like, I'm off my game a little bit this morning. I won't lie. I feel like dog crap this morning. Um, but I think it's time that we put a little bit more respect. Players want to come and play in Philadelphia. Trey Turner wanted to come here. He really did. And I think that is important to realize that we're not. We, we, we don't get the respect that we deserve. I mean, you look at you look at this graphic I'm going to put up on the screen here. Where is my overlays? The respect that ESPN, the disrespect on this graphic here. The Eagles are 11-1, and they have analytics saying that we have a 30% chance to make the Super Bowl. The Cowboys have a 50% chance. What analytics are you coming up with? This is just disrespect. Now, we could get details on this and why it's wrong, but I think there's a lot of disrespect going towards Philadelphia right now. And then with the Sixers, does Daryl Morey think we're stupid? Does Josh Harris think we're stupid as fans? I mean, I think we're smarter fan base across the board in all sports than people realize. And we know what's wrong with the Sixers team. But they don't, they, they don't care? I, I, I don't know. I mean, look, Doc Rivers, it's a problem. It is. But just saying that it's, 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 it's not, it's ignoring this problem. It's disrespecting the fan base, disrespecting the city, disrespecting the teams, and disrespecting the fan base across the board in those three things. I, th- I think it's something that needs to be addressed. I, I, I should have saved it. I, I'm just not feeling it this morning. Um, but I think it's something that needs to be discussed more about how the the lack of respect, and I don't even know if it's a lack of respect or a lack of whatever, but maybe more of just they know they can play with our emotions and the Philly fan base is going to click and share and talk it up and create more clicks for their sites. It could be that. But I think it's time to put some respect on this Philadelphia fan base and city as a sports city because, like I said, people want to come here. People want to play here. And we're a smart fan base. Anyway, look, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull this show off here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap it up for the day. Like, I, like, I got, I got a pounding headache here today. Um, I couldn't skip the show because we had the Taiwan Walker news and the Phillies news. I wanted to get some information out and some conversation out on it. So I greatly appreciate you guys listening and tuning in. Um, I'm gonna go lay down on the couch before I got to go to work and try to get over this headache right now. Um, everybody have a great Wednesday. Be back tomorrow. I'm trying to lock down a really good guest for tomorrow to talk Sixers and the problems with the Sixers team. Um, I'll let you know if I've got that. Uh, stay tuned on Twitter at Beard and Knowledge. I'll announce if I lock that guest down. Um, everybody have a great Wednesday. I'll be back tomorrow, hopefully feeling much, be- much better. Um, and, yeah, the Phillies are all in. I-, I-, I might not sound excited. 
I am excited, guys. I really am. I'm just not jumping and doing cartwheels like everybody else. Train the AM. Everybody have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.